This is Morning Prayers at St. Peter's, Ipswich, brought to you online, a place where we study God's Word together and where we join our hearts and our voices before the throne of God, praying for the needs of our world, our church and ourselves. Welcome this morning. The Lord be with you today, Wednesday the 23rd of October, in the year of our Lord 2024. The Bible says, Come into his presence with thanksgiving in your heart, and into his courts with praise. And so, Heavenly Father, as we come into your presence this morning, we pray that our hearts might be filled with thanksgiving at all the ways in which you have met us, and all the ways in which you have ministered and fulfilled our needs. And so with hearts filled with thanksgiving, we come into your presence and we want to say thank you, Lord. And so, Lord, we, we bring this time into your presence and ask that you minister to us by your Holy Spirit, wherever we are, at whatever time we are listening in, so that your name might be honoured and glorified in our lives and in our midst. In Jesus' name, Amen. We begin our time of prayer this morning as we say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Open our lips, O Lord, and we shall declare your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Our psalm for this morning is, the, is taken from the first three sections of Psalm 119. Uh, sorry, first four sections of Psalm 119, beginning at verse 1 through to verse 32. Uh, this is being read to us from the English Standard version of the Bible, Psalm 119. Psalm 119. Your word is a lamp to my feet. Blessed are those whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his testimonies, who seek him with their whole heart, who also do no wrong but walk in his ways. You have commanded your precepts to be kept diligently. Oh, that my ways may be steadfast in keeping your statutes. Then I shall not be put to shame, having my eyes fixed on all your commandments. I will praise you with an upright heart when I learn your righteous rules. I will keep your statutes. Do not utterly forsake me. How can a young man keep his way pure? by guarding it according to your word. With my whole heart I seek you. Let me not wander from your commandments. I have stored up your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. With my lips I declare all the rules of your mouth. In the way of your testimonies I delight as much as in all riches. I will meditate on your precepts and fix my eyes on your ways. I will delight in your statutes. I will not forget your word. Deal bountifully with your servant that I may live and keep your word. Open my eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of your law. I am a sojourner on the earth. Hide not your commandments from me. 
My soul is consumed with longing for your rules at all times. You rebuke the insolent, accursed ones who wander from your commandments. Take away from me scorn and contempt, for I have kept your testimonies. Even though princes sit plotting against me, your servant will meditate on your statutes. Your testimonies are my delight. They are my counselors. My soul clings to the dust. Give me life according to your word. When I told of my ways, you answered me. Teach me your statutes. Make me understand the way of your precepts, and I will meditate on your wondrous works. My soul melts away for sorrow. Strengthen me according to your word. Put false ways far from me and graciously teach me your law. I have chosen the way of faithfulness. I set your rules before me. I cling to your testimonies, O Lord. Let me not be put to shame. I will run in the way of your commandments when you enlarge my heart. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Amen. Our, our New Testament reading is taken from Paul's second epistle to Timothy, chapter 1, and beginning at verse 1 through to verse 14. So the first 14th verse, 14 verses of chapter 1 of 1 Timothy. If you wish to read the Old Testament reading uh, in your uh, own time, that is Leviticus chapter 8, if you wish to read that. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, according to the promise of the life that is in Christ Jesus. To Timothy, my beloved child, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God whom I serve, as did my ancestors, with a clear conscience, as I remember you constantly in my prayers, night and day. As I remember your tears, I long to see you, that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now I am sure dwells in you as well. For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of hands. For God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share in suffering for the gospel of the power of God who saved us and called us to a holy calling, not because of our works, but because of his own purpose and grace, which he gave us in Christ Jesus before the ages began, and which now has been manifested through the appearing of our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel, for which I was appointed a preacher and apostle and teacher, which is why I suffer as I do. But I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and I am convinced that he is able to guard until that day what has been entrusted to me. Follow the pattern of the sound words that you have kept heard from me in the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As we begin 
Timothy's second epistle that Paul has written to him. There are several observations to make about, about Timothy and about his ministry and his relationship with Paul. But chapter 1 gives us quite a comprehensive view into that dealing and that relationship that existed between Paul and Timothy. As I was saying yesterday, Paul has a tremendous desire to, to care for Timothy, whom he has brought up in the faith, who's like his godson or a surrogate son to him. Anyway, looking at chapter 1, verses 1 to 14 of, of Paul's epistle to Timothy, Paul is beginning to speak to Timothy about his own self. And you might consider, well, if Timothy is a pastor of a church and Paul wrote him all those lovely things in the last letter, why does Paul need to write this epistle that encourages Timothy in his own faith and encourages him in the ministry and calling of God that he's been called to? Surely these things Timothy must know. Surely there is a need, there is no need for Paul to go over them again. And if that is how you're thinking, you'd be quite wrong. And I'll tell you the reason why. The reason is that no matter how mature we get in the Lord, no matter how busy or how experienced we are in serving the kingdom of God, there always comes that point where the temptation is to step over the boundaries and start to do it in our own strength, follow our own wisdom rather than the wisdom that God has given us, follow where God is leading us and to step away from that path and do it our own way. But what Paul is doing is, he is once again, as he begins to talk about Timothy's ministry and Timothy's witness of himself as a Christian, he's beginning to talk to Timothy of his own self-care. And what he's doing is, he is saying to Timothy, listen, don't forget where you began. Think about it. Think once again about your faith. Think about what you were taught and stay steadfast in that. And for each of us in ministry and Christian work, it's so important for us to remember again and again the foundations of our faith. Because it's so easy to become weary and tired that we kind of let some things slide by. But Paul is reminding him and is saying to him, think again where you came from. Consider where you are. Consider what is happening. So with that kind of background to the epistle, Paul is, there are certain things I could, I could, when I start making a list of points, I, I think I got up to about 12 points just within these 14 verses and I realized I had to cut them down because we are time limited in a sense. Paul is encouraging Timothy to guard the deposit that is entrusted to him. That is what he's basically saying in these verses. Guard the deposit that has been made in your life, the, in, the deposit that's been entrusted to you to guard and to carry through this life. And I, I'm reminded of Ezra in a sense, because Ezra, when he was leaving Persia to return to Jerusalem after, at the end of the exile, the king entrusts him with a sum of money and with treasures that are to be carried back to Jerusalem and handed over to the priests and the priests for the use of the temple. And 
Ezra takes that that treasure and he inhabit he he gives it over to the young men and entrusts them. He says, You shall not sleep day nor night, but watch over this till such time as you discharge your duty, brought it to Jerusalem, and handed it over to the priests. So imagine that journey uh, from which is by foot, by road. From, from Persia all the way up to Jerusalem, those young men had to take it in turns. Obviously, they would have had to, but they did not allow that to be unguarded. They watched what was handed to them. Paul speaks about this treasure that we have in earthen vessels. And he's saying to Timothy, he says, listen, remember and guard. Remember the faith that was nurtured in you by your godmother and by your mother. Just remember, he says, I thank God whom I serve, Paul says, for the faith that I see, the faith first that your grandmother had, she taught it to your mother and the two of them taught it to you. He says, I'm sure that faith is in your life. And I think through them, we are being reminded, reminded to guard the faith that we have received from those that have gone ahead of us. To watch over that faith and to keep it safe. To nurture that faith both in ourselves and in those that are coming ahead of us. And whether as parents or grandparents or even godparents, we are to nurture that faith in the ones that God has committed to us. So Lewis, grandmother, taught Eunice, mother. And Lewis and Eunice taught Timothy. And I think that therein lies a great lesson for us today. The need to nurture the faith in those that we have ministered to and been a part of. He says, for this reason, I remind you, fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of hands. Fan the flame that is in you. Fan the, the flames of the gift that is in you by the laying on of hands. And just like you blow on the coals to get rid of all the white uh, ash, and allow the flames to once again burst forth in the wood or the coals or whatever. It's there, but it needs to be encouraged. It needs to be blown upon, breathed upon, and cause it to fan into flames so that it's a burning fire. That gift that is in us by the word of God that has been spoken into our lives. That gift that is in us by the laying on of hands whether at our baptism or our confirmation, at our ordination or our licensing, those that those hands that have been laid upon us have enabled us to receive that gift of the Holy Spirit and the gifts of ministry that we need to fulfill our calling. And remember, God has not given us a spirit of fear. We are to use these gifts boldly. We are to exercise what God has done boldly because God has called us. He's not given us a spirit of fear that we should think, oh, what can I do? I really don't. If I do this, people are going to laugh or I do this, I'm going to fall. He is able to keep us from falling says the word of God. Even unto the uttermost, he is to keep us from falling. So fan, the first thing is, nurture your faith. Think about it. Nurture the faith in others. Fan the flames of the gift that you've been given by the laying on of hands. And the laying on of hands is a very, very important part of this transference of blessing. When you lay hands on somebody, 
you're identifying with them, you're identifying them with yourself, and you are conveying to them the grace and the word of God. And then the third thing in verse 12, do not be ashamed. Do not be ashamed of the gospel. See, in Romans chapter 1, Paul says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is a power of salvation even to those who believe. Near and far off, the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. And in verse 12, this is Paul's testimony. I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and I'm convinced that he is able to guard until that day what has been entrusted to me. I know whom I have believed. I know God. I know the Father who sent His Son to redeem me. I know the Son who sent the Holy Spirit to empower me. I know whom I have believed. And that is where a lot of the confidence comes in the gospel by the fact that we know the one who spoke the gospel. We know the one who spoke his word and the words came into being, who spoke that word, that word took on flesh. We know the one who calls us, who puts within us the gift that we are called to fan into flames. So I know whom I have believed, says Paul. Timothy, do you know who you've be believed? You should, because your grandmother taught you, your mother taught you, I've taught you. You should know whom you have believed. And I am convinced, he says, I know God, but I'm also convinced that he is able, he is able to guard until that day what has been entrusted to me. The word of God that has been entrusted to me, he will guard in my life. He will watch over it until it performs that for purpose for which it has been sent. He will guard the gift in our life because the gift has been given to serve his kingdom. And that is what he has called us for. By the Holy Spirit, follow the pattern of the sung words, Timothy. By the Holy Spirit who dwells within us, guard the good deposit entrusted to you. No sleeping on the job. No becoming lax in what we are to do. But being vigilant, being careful, standing on the word of God, we are to claim and hold on to the good deposit entrusted to us. So, brothers and sisters, the question for us today, do we remember the faith that we have received? That we've been so privileged to receive from those that have gone before? And are we diligently teaching this to the next generation? Yeah? And then, Have we hidden the treasure in the ground and said, we know that you are a hard taskmaster? Or are we fanning into flames with enthusiasm the gift of God in our lives? And finally, the foundational question of it all, do we know our God? 
do we know him? Because if we know him, then we will also know that he is utterly capable, even to the ends of time and earth, to keep it safe, to keep that word of God safe in us, to protect the gift of God that is in us. Let us pray. The Lord be with you and with my spirit. Let us pray. O Lord, show us your mercy and grant us your salvation. O Lord, save the King and mercifully hear us when we pray to you. Endow your ministers with righteousness and make your chosen people joyful. O Lord, save your people and bless your inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, for you are our help and strength. O God, cleanse our hearts and revive us by your Holy Spirit. Amen. The collect which is appointed for this week, the 21st after Trinity, Merciful Lord, grant to your faithful people pardon and peace that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Collect for a Morning O Lord, our Heavenly Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, we praise you for bringing us safely to the beginning of this day. Defend us with your mighty power and grant that we fall into no sin nor run into any kind of danger but govern and guide us at all times so that we may do what is right in your sight through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, the author and lover of peace, whom to know is eternal life and to serve is perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, against all assaults of our enemies, that trusting in your defence, we may not fear the power of any adversary through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so let us turn to our time of prayer. Heavenly Father, at this time, as we come into your presence, we pray for our families and our loved ones. We want to say thank you for those who faithfully taught us your word, that we might be able to come into your presence. And thank you for that gift of faith and salvation that you've entrusted to us. Your word is in our mouth that we might speak of the good things of God. Your word dwells in our heart. And so we pray, Heavenly Father, that your word might strengthen us, that even as we search it to know your will and purpose, that you would strengthen us and draw us to yourself. Father, we pray for the young people that we do have contact with, either within our families, in our social circle, or in our church life. Lord, may we take teaching and training them with seriousness before you. And in truth, Lord, be able to pass on to them and build into them your word. That your word in them might bring forth fruit for your kingdom. Heavenly Father, at this time we pray that we might be able to keep our eyes fixed upon Jesus. Fixed upon your word. 
because you have called us. And Father, as we hear you cry and speak, may your name be glorified. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for our church and the church in this diocese. We pray for Bishop Martin as the acting Bishop of Worcester. We pray for Archdeacon Nikki Grock on her sabbatical. We pray for our area dean Paul Lawler and for the clergy of this town and of this deanery. And especially in this parish, we pray for Ian Evans, Linda Nicholas, myself, and for Paul Lawler. That, Lord, we might remember the laying on of hands and the gift that was in us. And that, Lord, we might use that gift to serve your kingdom. By our lives and by our teaching, may we speak of holiness and righteousness in family life and in personal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for our school, for the opportunity there is to be able to minister to them in the open doors. We pray especially today for the two uh, year groups that will be coming for the five year, uh, for year five students. We pray that as they come to this church for their collective act of worship, that they would be touched by your Holy Spirit in the service, either by speaking or by just us being there. May the ministry of the word to them sow a seed that will grow up. And Father, as we seek to help the school in so many different ways, we pray that we might see a mighty work of God that we can be justly proud of because it comes from you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for our world at this time. And one sometimes wonders where can we begin to pray and how can we begin to pray. But what we do know, Lord, is that your eyes rove to and fro over the earth. You see every person, you see the challenges that they face, you see the disasters that they're in. Famines, drought, flooding, earthquakes, drastic temperature changes, to name but a few of the challenges they face. We pray, Lord, that you would be with people wherever they are. And Lord, would you be gracious to them? Would you reveal yourself to them in the midst of that? And I just thank you for the many testimonies coming out of Israel at this time of the way in which people are seeing you and getting to know you better. Thank you for revealing yourself to them in such a powerful way at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick. We ask, Lord, that you would bring healing to them, comfort them in their distress, strengthen them in their weakness. Raise them up from their bed of sickness that your purposes might be fulfilled in them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the families and loved ones of those who have died. Lord, we bring them before you and we pray that at this time of their grief and bereavement, you will bring peace into their lives. 
that you would speak, Lord, a word that they need to hear. Draw near to them. Lay your hand upon their shoulders and upon their head. Let your voice speak into their hearts that their ears might hear you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And so, as we draw our prayers to a close, we do so in the words of the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. And so, brothers and sisters, thank you for joining me once again this morning uh, for morning prayer. I hope to see you again tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. And um, we will continue to rejoice in the Lord and the ways in which he has drawn us to himself. Remember the gift that is in you. Fan into flames the faith that is in you. And above all, know that you can trust God, whom you believe, and know that he is able to save you unto the uttermost and to save that and guard that which he has planted in your life until the day that Jesus returns. So till then, goodbye and God bless. Thank you.